Hey cat lovers and welcome back to another video. For many people, summer is a time for rest, relaxation, and most excitingly, traveling. Vacations provide excellent getaways from the stress of daily life. However, if you are a cat owner, going on vacation or traveling for work can create a whole new kind of stress. What do you do with your cat? If you're not bringing your cat with you, it can be nerve-wracking to prepare to leave them behind for the duration of your trip. But it doesn't have to be. By properly planning and educating yourself on the various options available, you can ensure a smooth trip for both you and your feline friend. If you enjoy this kind of content, subscribe to the channel for more cat videos. Now let's discuss what you should do with your cat when you travel. Deciding where to leave your cat. The first step to take when figuring out what to do with your cat when you go on vacation is to figure out where you are going to leave your cat. There are three primary options to choose from, leaving your cat at home and hiring a cat sitter, leaving your cat at a friend or relative's house, or leaving your cat in a kennel. It is important to fully understand the pros and cons of each of these options before you can make an educated decision that will be the best for your cat. The most important thing to consider is your cat's comfort and care. Now let's go over each option. Option number one, a cat sitter. Hiring a cat sitter tends to be the most ideal option when it comes to your cat's comfort and well-being. Cats are creatures of habit and tend to dislike change. Your absence will likely be a stressor for your cat, so it's important to try to limit the amount of anxiety your cat experiences as much as possible. If your cat can stay in its home and around your scent, it will be more comfortable than if it goes to a different house or kennel. If you decide to hire a cat sitter, you have a lot of options to choose from. You may decide to ask a neighbor, a friend, or a relative to sit for you. While this can be a great option because you already know and trust the person, it is important to make sure that they know how to properly care for your cat, especially if they do not have a cat of their own. Make sure to give them adequate instructions and advice. Ideally, these instructions should be written down that way the sitter can refer back to it if needed. It's also a good idea to have them come over multiple times before you leave to introduce them to your cat. If your cat is familiar with the person that will be caring for it, the experience will be much less stressful. Hiring someone you know to sit your cat can be a great idea. Alternatively, you can find a qualified professional pet sitter. There are plenty of sites to find well-vetted qualified cat sitters. For example, for example, Rover.com is a very popular pet sitter website. Aside from Rover, there is also Wagwalking.com, Care.com, FetchPetCare.com, and more. So between all these options, chances are there are cat sitters in your area. Another perk to using one of these sites is that they require their sitters to undergo background checks. You can also ask your local shelters for cat sitter recommendations. Often, shelters will have lists of cat sitters in your area that they can provide you with. Finding a cat sitter through a shelter is a good idea because you can be assured they are qualified. They might even be on one of those pet sitter websites. Also, you can ask your friends and family for cat sitter references. This way, you will have a first-hand account of how the sitter cared for a cat from someone that you trust. Regardless of how you find your cat sitter, ensure they are experienced, well-reviewed, and have adequate qualifications. Possible, meet with them beforehand. This way, you can introduce them to your cat and meet them in person to see if they are a good fit for you and your cat. As mentioned, you need to make sure to leave written instructions and schedules. You should try to keep your cat's routine as stable as possible while you are gone. You can do this by providing your cat sitter with detailed instructions on how and when to do various things to care for your cat. Write down when your cat gets its meals, what activities your cat likes to participate in, and grooming needs, if any. You should also write emergency information, including an address and phone number of an emergency vet and the number of a trusted friend or relative in case the sitter can't get a hold of you. Phones get lost on vacation all the time, so it doesn't hurt to over-prepare. You should also provide your sitter with treats and toys so your cat can learn to positively associate those things with the sitter. This can make the introduction process smoother. It can be nerve-wracking to leave your cat with a sitter, so it's important to make sure it is someone qualified and someone you trust. Hiring a sitter can alleviate the stress on your cat by keeping them in a safe, familiar environment. When deciding whether or not it is the best idea for you, keep your cat's comfort and happiness at the forefront of your mind. Option number two, a friend or relative's house. Another option is to leave your cat with a friend or family member at their house. If your cat is familiar with this person, it will make the process much easier. However, if your friend or relative could stay at your house instead, that is the most ideal option. Staying in an unfamiliar environment can be very stressful for cats, but if you decide to leave your cat at someone's house, you can try to take your cat to visit beforehand. This might help alleviate the stress your cat experiences during their stay. Also, be sure to leave detailed instructions just like you would any other cat sitter. Note that you should avoid leaving your cat with friends or relatives that have other pets. If your cat has met and is compatible with their pets, then it can work. 
However, it is best to avoid leaving your cat in an environment with other pets that it has never met. Cats can be very territorial creatures, so both your cat and your friend or relative's cat may react poorly to each other's presence. This can be very stressful for both pets or even dangerous if they were to fight. If you do leave your cat at a house with another cat, make sure that a solitary room can be provided for your cat. Your cat needs to have its own space, especially when it's in an unfamiliar environment outside of your home. It's also important to keep as many factors the same as possible. For example, bring your cat's bed or toys with them. This way your cat will have some familiar and safe spaces. Option number three, a kennel. Third option is to leave your cat at a boarding facility or kennel. However, it should be noted that this may not work for all cats. Some cats may find the experience of being boarded too stressful. If you decide to board your cat, make sure to do enough research beforehand to find a suitable facility. There are plenty of facilities that offer top-notch care with professional, knowledgeable staff members. So if you go with this option, the first step is to research kennels in your area and compare the prices and reviews to find the best fit for you and your cat. Proper facilities should always have constant supervision of your cat, access to food and water at all times, and interactive staff. If possible, find a facility that boards cats separately from dogs. The experience of boarding will already be a stressful one, and the presence of dogs may compound that anxiety. Many good boarding facilities offer individual rooms to cats instead of cages. These rooms should be outfitted with enrichment activities to keep your cat engaged and ease their stress. Veterinary clinics often will board cats, and this option is sometimes the most accessible for some people. At clinics, you can comfortably know that the staff is well equipped to care for your cat. However, cats are often kept in cages instead of rooms at clinics. Reviews online are a great way to evaluate a facility. It is also important to visit the facility beforehand to see where your cat will stay. Visiting will not only allow you to check out the potential facilities, but it will also put your mind at ease knowing your cat is in a good environment. When you bring your cat to the boarding facility, bring some toys that they love and are familiar with. You can also bring an old t-shirt of yours or something that smells like you. This will provide your cat with some comfort and a sense of your presence even while you are away. Leaving your cat alone overnight. If you are taking a short trip where you are spending one night away from your cat, you may be wondering whether or not it's necessary to find pet sitting arrangements. As a general rule, you should not leave your cat alone for more than 24 hours. Though cats are fairly self-sufficient animals, they are more social than most people think. Leaving a cat alone for more than 24 hours may cause the cat to feel sad, anxious, and fearful. Many cats experience separation anxiety that they may exhibit through destructive behaviors like scratching furniture or not eating. However, if you are only going to be away for one night and less than 24 hours, it's generally okay to leave your cat alone. If your cat is healthy, it should be okay for one night alone. If you are leaving your cat alone overnight, make sure to properly prepare. Make sure the litter box has been freshly changed right before you leave. As a side note, investing in a self-cleaning litter box might be worth considering. You also need to make sure your cat has a sufficient amount of food and water. A pet water fountain is a great idea as it keeps the water fresh and available. Also prepare your house by cleaning up and removing anything your cat might get into, like trash. Close any doors to rooms that you don't want your cat going into and secure them with a doorstop. Provide lots of toys and enrichments so your cat doesn't get bored. Bored or anxious cats may scratch or destroy furniture. It is best to redirect this anxious energy onto cat scratching towers or toys. It is also worth investing in a nanny cam to keep an eye on your cat while you are gone. This way you can check in on your cat to make sure it is okay periodically throughout the night. Most modern nanny cams have apps so that you can monitor them through your phone. If possible, let a trusted neighbor, friend, or relative know that your cat will be staying alone. Provide them with a key or hide a key outside so that they can get in if there is an emergency. This way, if there is an issue, they can quickly check on your cat to make sure everything is okay. Also, for example, if you get stuck in major traffic and will be home later than expected, you can have this person check on your cat until you get home. Keep in mind, kittens and elderly cats should not be left alone, even for less than 24 hours. So this option is solely for healthy adult cats. Leaving your cat when going on vacation can be stressful for both of you, but hopefully you feel more comfortable now that you know what your options are and how to go about them. As you now know, it is possible to make it as stress-free as possible by prioritizing your cat's comfort and well-being. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up because it helps other cat lovers find our content. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next Catterday for another video.